Section 5 continues our work with slope. Um, the first thing it does is it gives you another way of finding the equation of a line if you know the slope and any point on the line. Uh, previously, we were going with the one point we knew was the y-intercept for our y equals mx plus b, but now we have a slightly different formula, this one here, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, <coughs> where xy is any point on the line. It does not have to be where the line crosses the y-axis. And then we can simplify to find out uh, the equation of the line. And so here, for example, we're going to say that the line goes through the point 25 and has a slope of 3. And so plugging it in, remember the first number is the x, the second number is the y. And so plugging the numbers in, we have y minus 5 equals 3, the slope times x minus 2. Go ahead and distribute to 3. So y minus 5 equals 3x. Subtract 6, move the 5 over, and we end up with an equation for this line. And again, it's in slope-intercept form, so the actual intercept of the y-axis was at negative 1, or if you want the point 0, negative 1, and our slope is 3. But we could find this without actually knowing where it crossed the y-axis. <clears throat> the point-slope equation allows us to find the equation of a line knowing only two points. So if we have just two points, we can use our slope equation to find the slope. And then now that I have the slope, I'm right back to the example at the top of the page, which is I can use either one of these two points and that slope I just found out in this equation called the point slope form to find out the equation of a line. So that's the first part of section five. The rest of it really deals with parallel and perpendicular. Basically, if you have any two lines on a graph, there are three possibilities. Uh, they could be parallel. They could be perpendicular. Perpendicular means that they cross at right angles to each other. Parallel, of course, means they don't get any closer or any farther apart. The third possibility is that they intersect but they are not perpendicular. So the angles between the two lines are not right angles, are not 90 degrees. Here we have a couple of examples. Line A has 2 thirds x plus 4, so note that it went through the 4, and then up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, and so forth. Line B is 2x. 2 thirds x plus 1, so it crossed at 1, but it also has that same slope of 2 over 3, of 2 over 3. Anytime two lines that are in the same plane have the same slope, they are parallel. On the other hand, line C is perpendicular to the other two lines, and they are perpendicular when you multiply their two slopes and you get negative 1. Or another way of putting it, it is one, res one of the slopes is positive, the other one is negative, but the fractions are reciprocals of each other. So notice 2 over 3 for the first one, 3 over 2 for the second one. One positive, one negative, and then reciprocals of each other. Sometimes you will see these symbols in text, if you have the two lines like that, that means they're parallel. If you have the upside down T, then that means that uh, they're perpendicular. All right, so we're going to find the equation of a line that goes through these two points. So first we find the slope. And again, we're, you know, basically just uh, going to go, you know, uh, fact uh, x1, y1, x2, y2, really doesn't matter. I just usually go 
stuff to write like I read. And so I'm going to have negative 2 subtract a 6 over 3 subtract negative 1. <coughs> Top part gives me negative 8. Bottom part gives me a 4. And so my slope is negative 2. Now I'll use the point slope form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I'm going to, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to pick this one here. And so y subtract a negative 2. I put in the parentheses just to remind myself that I'm putting in negative 2. And then over here, we've already found the slope. And then x subtract 3. And the rest of it is simply simplifying. y subtract the negative becomes y plus 2. We're going to distribute negative 2x plus 6. Negative 2 times negative 3, positive 6. And then move the 2. So y equals negative 2x plus 4. And there's my answer. <coughs> Okay, in the second one, similar kind of thing. Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. So, 5 subtract a negative 7 over 6 subtract a negative 2. 5 plus 7 will give me 12. 6 plus 2 will give me 8. So my slope is 3 over 2. Generally want to reduce that. And now I'll use my slope intercept form or my slope point slope form. And again it doesn't matter. I'm going to pick the second one just because they're both positive makes the math easier, so y minus 5 equals 3 halves, x subtract 6, let's go ahead and distribute, 3 halves x subtract 9, add the 5 to both sides, and so y equals 3 halves x subtract 4. So, two examples where I have two points and I can find the line that goes between the two points. <laughs> All right, next up, find the equation of the line that is parallel to this line that goes through that point. Well, parallel means same slope. And in this case, our slope is 4. So M is 4 for both lines, since we want them to be parallel. Now I can do my point slope form, y minus y1, x minus x1. No, no, I always start out actually writing out the equation, then plugging things in. So, y minus 8, again, the second number is always the y, 4 times x minus 3, so y minus 8 equals 4x subtract 12, move the 8 over, and y equals 4. In the second case, I want uh, a line that is perpendicular. <clears throat> Remember that perpendicular that means negative reciprocal. 
stops. Now, this is written in standard form. I can't actually tell what the slope is yet, so I'm going to rearrange it. So 3x subtract 2y equals 8. Now I'm going to move the 3x. So negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 8. Now I'm going to divide everybody by the negative 2. So y equals 3 over 2x subtract 4. 8 over negative 2 is a negative 4. <clears throat> but that tells me my slope is 3 over 2. <clears throat> and if I want to be perpendicular, and I, you know, I'm going to put a little 1 there, my first slope was 3 over 2. Well, then my second line, my second slope, well, that one's positive, so this one has to be negative. And then I have to flip to get the reciprocal. So it's negative 2 over 3. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and do y minus y1 equals n times x minus x1. Here's my point. So I'm going to have y subtract at negative 7 equals negative 2 thirds times x subtract to negative 6. So y plus 7 equals negative 2 thirds x. Let's see, negative subtract, that was positive, times another negative, so that's going to be, uh, let's see, another negative, so that's negative 4. And then I subtract 7 from both sides to get my final answer of negative 2 thirds x subtract 11. And so there I have a line that goes through negative 6, negative 7, but is perpendicular to my original line. <clears throat> All right, so now we have one in which it is uh, set up as a word problem. Um, contract to the landscaper to instruct a wall. Cost was 10000 uh, paid a deposit the first month and agreed for fixed monthly payments until the balance was paid off. Let's see. So after three months, owe this much. And after seven months, owe that much. So that gives us two points. Three, 6800 And... 7, 5, so I can find my slope, uh, 6,800, subtract 5,200, over 3, subtract 7, which is 1,600, over negative 4, which is negative So that gives me uh, the slope. <clears throat> so now I'm going to use my slope intercept form and I'm going to use this first one. So y subtract the 6800 has to equal negative 400 times x subtract 3. Let's go ahead and distribute. So y subtract the 6800 equals negative 400x. And then negative 400 times the 3 is plus 1200. <clears throat> and now move the 6800. And so I'll put it over here. y is going to equal negative 400x uh, plus. Now, at x equals 0, 
y would have equaled 8,000. The initial uh, loan or the initial cost was 10,000. There's 8,000 left at the uh, end of the deposit. So 10,000 subtract 8,000, which gives me 2,000. That was the deposit. So that's the first part. <clears throat> Second part says, how long will it take him to pay off the entire balance? Well, Y represents the balance at any given time. So if I paid it all off, that will be zero, in which case now I have this for the remaining. Move the 8,000. Divide both sides by the negative 400. And X ends up being 20. So, 20 months paid off. So, an example of using the point slope form, but also an example of a real life example of a linear type uh, function. All right, in number four, we want to look at the pairs of lines and decide uh, whether or not they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Now, first thing to note, if the slopes aren't the same, they're not parallel. So negative two, negative one half, not parallel. So if I multiply them, They're perpendicular if it equals negative one. Well, this was a positive one. So this case is neither. Now here, I don't have them in slope intercept form. So I need to rearrange. So on the first one, I'm going to go, uh, let's see, six Y equals negative 8x plus 12. So note that I have taken uh, the 8x, moved it to the other side. I'm going to divide everybody by 6. So y equals negative 8 over 6x plus 2, which if I simplify, y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 2. So that was the first one. For the second one, move the 12x. So I'm going to have 9y equals negative 12x. Subtract 27. Divide everything by the 9. y equals negative 12 over 9x. Uh, subtract 3. 27 over 9 gives me 3. Reducing gives me y equals negative 4 thirds x. Subtract 3. So in this case, note 4 thirds x. 4 thirds x. They both have the same slope. Again, slope does not include the x, but the same number in front, negative 4 thirds. So these ones are parallel. I just had to rearrange first to figure that out. All right, see here, we're going to do a little rearranging as well. This one's a little bit easier. Let's see, the first one, x plus 2y equals 3 times 2y equals negative x plus 3, which is going to become y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 over 2. So that's the first one. The second one, we have. 2x minus y equals negative 3. So we're going to have negative y uh, equals negative 2x. Subtract 3. Switch the sign. So y equals positive 2x plus 3. 
Now, again, we need to look at the slopes. So there's the slope of the one. There's the slope of the other one. If I take negative one half times positive two, I get negative one, which means perpendicular. All right, so let's see, uh, on the top one, move the 6x, so 3y equals negative 6x plus 12, and divide everybody by the negative 3, that's going to give me y equals 2x, subtract 4. Again, 6 over 3, we give me the 2, 12 over 3, give me the 4. For the second one, I'm going to move the, 4, the 4x, so minus 2y equals negative 4x plus 8. Now divide everybody by the negative 2, so y equals um, 2x subtract 4. Now, you might think, well, hey, same slopes, therefore they're parallel. However, note that the y-intercepts were the same too. These are actually the same line. And so you have to pick the neither case because you cannot say that the line, if it's the same line, can be parallel to itself. <coughs> Okay, part D, hey, there's no y there. If there's no y, if it's just x equals, then both lines are vertical. And all vertical lines are parallel. Part E, there's no x's. So here, both lines are horizontal. And all horizontal lines are parallel. So, a little shortcut there. <clears throat> now, if, you know, part of the idea behind <clears throat> this section is they're going to give you different pieces of information and then you have to use the information in the uh, section to figure out is something true or not. So, in this case, we have two line or a line that passes through these two points, and we want to know is it parallel to this line? Well, first off, let's take a look at that line: negative three x plus five y equals fifteen. Move the x, so 5y equals 3x plus 15. And now divide everybody by the 5, so y equals 3 fifths x plus 3. Well, here, the 3 fifths that's my slope. And if these uh, are going to be parallel, they have to have the same slope. So now, I'm going to use my slope equation. Again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here, 8 minus 2 over 4, subtract a negative 6. 8 minus 2 is 6. 4 uh, plus 6 is 10, which is 3 fifths. So the line that goes through those two points also has a slope of 3 fifths. Same slope. They are parallel. Part B, we're going to see the same kind of question, but now we want to see if they are, in fact, 
perpendicular. And so we're going to go through the same steps. First, I'm going to take my original line, which is not in slope intercept form. Move things around. I'm going to have 10 over 4, which is 5 over 2. When I reduce, the negatives cancel to make it positive, and then 8 over 4 gives me 2. Here's my slope. And again, that's my slope. Now, we're going to use my slope formula to find out the line between these two points, what its slope is. y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, so 7 minus 9 over 4 subtract negative 1. Negative 2 over 5. So on the second one, its slope is negative 2 fifths. We want to see if these are perpendicular. So 5 over 2 times negative 2 over 5 gives me negative 10 over 10, which is negative 1. So they are, in fact, And then in the last one, all I have are four points. So one line goes through the first two points, the second line goes through the second two points, and I want to know if these are uh, perpendicular. So I'm just going to do my uh, slope formula twice. So for the first one, I'm going to have 7 subtract the negative 8 over 2 subtract the negative 3. That gives me 15 over 5, which means the slope is 3. In the second case, I'm going to have 7 subtract 3 over 7 subtract the negative 5. 7 subtract 3 is 4. 7 plus 5 is 12, which is leading to and is 1 third. Now, 3 times 1 third equals 1. Okay, that's not negative 1, it's positive 1. And therefore, not perpendicular. And so that gives us section 